Continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP as it's commonly referred to, is a form of non-invasive ventilation used in the treatment of acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema. CPAP promotes alveolar recruitment, improves pulmonary gas exchange, decreases the work of breathing, and is associated with decreased intubation rates and also admission stays in hospital. The QAS is proud to announce that CPAP will be introduced in early 2013 as a core skill for intensive care paramedics. The O2 closed CPAP system is a new product in Australia that has recently received Therapeutic Goods Administration approval. The O2 CPAP system has several favourable features when compared to other products currently used in the pre-hospital environment. It is single use only, therefore fully disposable. It has a minimal number of parts, therefore it's quick and easy to assemble. It uses standard pieces of equipment and no need for manometers and additional flow meters. Because we only use a current 15 litre flow meter, our oxygen consumption rates are very low. Now let's look at the components. A size 4 air cushion mask. We do supply size 5 masks separately if required for larger adults. Harness hook ring. The size 4 mask is identified with a red harness hook ring, where a size 5 mask has a blue harness hook ring. A vector flow valve with the oxygen flow pressure table displayed. Oxygen tubing and a soft patient harness. The continuous positive airway pressure is created when the vector flow valve accelerates the oxygen flow, causing turbulence at the restrictor exit. This in turn causes the pressure to drop and allows for ambient air to be entrained into the chamber and mixed with oxygen. By varying the oxygen flow through the vector flow valve, the baseline pressure can be raised or lowered to maintain a constant airway pressure. The CPAP clinical practice procedure lists the following indications, contraindications and also complications. Indication acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Contraindications. A patient with a GCS of equal to or less than eight. Insufficient ventilatory drive. Hypotension, characterized by a blood pressure of less than 90 millimeters systolic. Pneumothorax, facial trauma or epistaxis. Officers must also be aware of the following complications. Aspiration, corneal drying, hypotension, gastric distension and barotrauma. Let's now look at the practical application of the O2 CPAP device in the field. Ensure all standard cares have been completed and ensure the patient is in a seated position. Explain the procedure to the patient as patient understanding cooperation is essential for the success of CPAP. Select the appropriate size face mask ensuring that the inner circumference of the air cushion encompasses the bridge of the nose, side of the mouth and the inferior border of the bottom lip. Attach the vector flow valve to the mask Connect the oxygen tubing to a standard 15 litre per minute flow meter and adjust the oxygen flow rate to 10 litres per minute to generate 8 centimetres of water of continuous positive airway pressure. Position the mask on the face of the patient and secure using the supplied harness to achieve a comfortable airtight seal. If the patient is apprehensive, ask the patient to gently hold the mask on their face and secure when possible. Monitor the patient's response to treatment, specifically their respiration rate, SpO2, blood pressure, chest sounds and work of breathing. If appropriate, increase the airway pressure every three to five minutes to a maximum of 15 centimetres of water. If the patient shows any evidence of deterioration or vomits within the CPAP mask, it is to be removed immediately and the patient treated in accordance with the appropriate CPG. If at any time the patient requires the administration of sublingual medication, simply release the bottom harness straps and lift the mask. This will provide access to the patient's mouth. Once the medication has been administered, simply reattach the harness and ensure an airtight seal. On completion of the case, you'll be required to enter all details on the electronic ambulance report form. On the patient's management screen, you'll specifically see that we have listed continuous positive airway pressure CPAP as an intervention. You'll also be required to submit an O2 CPAP data capture form to the medical director's office, along with the LifePak 12 summary and the EARF. If you have any questions regarding this or any other clinical instructions, please don't hesitate to contact your clinical support officer or myself. Thank you for your time.